All right. I think we're um, in business. Okay. Just doing a sound check. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, I seem to not be able to hear you, Brian. I don't know if it's my side. Oh, okay. Uh, something's coming through. Perfect. Yep. Just had to switch it over to my headphone mic here, but uh, we are good to go. So how awesome. are you? Okay. Yeah, good, good. And how are you doing, Brian? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, obviously, it's been a rough time for the markets, but uh, oh, yeah. you know, personally did well. And we've had a great time kind of analyzing everything that's been going on with uh, the crazy roller coaster that we've yeah, seen yeah. over the last couple of uh, seven months or so now. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's um, it's definitely um, uh, a lot of pain right now. So, OK, so let's get started. Um, look, guys, welcome to Future Proof. Uh, today's Thursday, the 9th of June. Uh, it's probably still Wednesday, the, the 8th of June over. At, uh, yep. uh, so a good evening to Brian and a good morning to us in uh, in Asia. OK, so. Hope everyone's staying well and staying safe. Um, again, we have Brian Quinlivan from Sentiment. Uh, a big and warm welcome to, to Brian. Um, it's been a while. We kind of skipped last month, and that was my fault. <laughs> um, it's quite all right. <laughs> and uh, and we're glad we're glad to be back. All right. So I think we've done a mic test. I can hear you well. You can hear me well. Um, so today, you know, we're changing up the format a little bit, right? So let's see let's see how we go with uh, with timing today. Um, look, uh, guys, uh, you know, we'll, we'll jump straight to it, but, uh, today we're, we're gonna, um, before we get into it, I'm just gonna quickly share this. Okay. Look, so whatever we talk about, uh, today from here on out, um, is not financial advice. Do not take it as financial advice. Uh, we're just having a chat. Um, uh, it is just educational. And so, uh, yeah, don't, you know, if, if you're going to make any financial decision, consult with a financial um, uh, advisor. Okay, I'm going to remove that. And um, okay, Brian, look, uh, over to you to do a quick intro, and then let's jump right into it. You bet. Yeah. So I'm Brian uh, from Santiment. I've been with the team for about three years now. Uh, started more on the marketing end, and I've kind of merged more toward the content side of things over the past six to eight months or so. Uh, and my job is to kind of analyze the markets, give updates on what our data is showing. Obviously, for those who don't know what sentiment is, we update on on-chain and social analytics and look at alpha uh, based on what's coming in and what kind of bullish and bearish divergences are showing right now. Uh, and there's quite a bit to, to dig through. So I'm more than happy to share my screen here and we can jump right into it, Andy. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Awesome. So let me know if you can see this okay. Yeah, it's just coming up and I'm about to add it to the stream. Um, wait. Um, uh, so this, this I, I think you've added this. Yeah, Should there you right. go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Perfect. Here we go. Okay. So today's update is going to mainly be around the stable coin craziness that's been going on for the last month. Uh, going back to early May, for those who don't remember, it's just, just been about a month since the Terra Luna collapse. And uh, there's been a lot of speculation as to why uh, the funding moving out of the uh, main accounts, uh, Luna itself having a big Bitcoin chunk that they sold off. Um, and of course, Terra <clears throat> USD, which is the associated stable coin, saw a, a major DPEG from $1. Uh, and that caught a lot of people off guard. And the associated coin, Terra Luna, was uh, unfortunately uh, seeing a quick collapse and demise after that happened. <clears throat> it's of course dropped. 99.9999 percent or so uh since it's all time back in mid-april so just about six seven weeks ago things were flying high for luna and now it's basically a a dead coin uh according to crowd consensus so we're going to look at terra uh usd in just a moment before we do 
we'll actually take a look at Tether, which went through its own craziness uh, about three weeks ago after Terra USD depegged from a dollar. Tether had a depeg of its own, and that's a much bigger deal because this is the top stable coin in cryptocurrency that a lot of people move their dollars to in order to feel safety. So when the safe coin goes from a dollar to 95 cents over time, uh, that causes a great wave of panic. And we saw that this wasn't just regular traders. Whales saw a huge degree of panic as well. And you can see how they just absolutely got rid of a massive amount of Tether's supply that they were holding on to, just about 5% or so, holding about 35% up here in early May. And then by, it looks like the first week of June, just a few days ago, they dropped down to about 30.5%. So give or take a 4.5% drop in all of the Tether available on the Tether blockchain that was filtered out of whale wallets and into smaller wallets. So that is a concerning sign for the top stable coin in the world. And we can take a look at what happened, where that money actually went, uh, where whales are parking it now. Um, I'll tell you where it hasn't gone. And that is to the UST, now, as, now known as USTC address, uh, or I should say uh, the USTC um, supply has also dropped just like Tether from the whales perspective. You can see here on May 1st, they were up at about 58.9% held of all UST. And then they dropped all the way down to 19.6%. So they obviously did not want to hold on to any UST that was essentially a, a fraction of its price and no longer depegged to uh, $1. It dropped down to 29 cents at one point, got back up to 50 cents. <clears throat> and action, I can actually just click unlock metric and it'll now show me the USTC price, which is down all the way to 0 0.0009622 cents. So, wow. Like, it's just That's... a non existent stable coin at this point. Yeah. So basically USTC and Tether were both widely impacted by their respective DPEGs that happened in May. Uh, Tether looks like it's it's recovered, obviously. That would be a huge story if it wasn't. Still slightly down. You can see it was right up around a dollar and now it's sitting at you know 99.9 .9 cents. Take that for what you will. But you know, UST slash USTC, you know, there's there's just nothing there. So pretty fascinating, right, Andy? Absolute destruction of value. Um, yeah. and, and, and I have to say, this was, um, you know, of all the crypto crashes that, that I've seen or, or experienced, um, this one's by far the largest and the fastest that I've seen happen. Yeah, I can't remember a single time. I mean, obviously, Terra Luna as well. They both yeah. crashed together. But, uh, you know, in recent memory, I can't think of anything like this. Yeah. Um, Terra Luna was, I believe, like the sixth or seventh largest market cap asset in the world right before its crash. Um, and yeah. if we look at like what the whales were doing, what is the price now? I mean, now it's down to... Oh, I see why. It's because uh, we're showing Luna 2.0 data now, so I won't yeah, even be able okay. to demonstrate it. But Luna 1.0, you know, the whales were looking the same way. They actually all dropped out in advance of the dump because the big whales were the ones holding all of the supply that was eventually dumped. So they were planning already to get out of it. And that foreshadowed that something pretty funky was going on with Luna. Yeah. But uh yeah, we can also take a look at where the stable coins went, those, te those Tether and all the Terra USD. Here is USDC, uh, known as USD coin, widely used on Coinbase, among other top exchanges. Uh, we see a monumental rise that was actually starting all the way back on Valentine's Day, about three and a half months ago. Uh, they were holding, the address is holding anywhere between 100,000 to $10 million dollars we're holding about 22.1% back on this date. <clears throat> Got all the way up to 31.4% just under three months later. So they they jumped and added about 9% to 
of all of the USDC supply, which is, as you would imagine, pretty significant. Um, and it really took off here, which is when the UST and Tether began to get dumped pretty quickly. Massive. Yeah. And then the other coin would be DAI uh, around the same time. Uh, the multi-collateral DAI token, which is uh, very often associated with Ethereum, major upswing going from 22.6% uh, all the way up to 33.1% just in the matter of about four or five days. So this is kind of a good thing. It means that whales didn't just jump out of crypto and say, I'm not, not dealing with this falling sector anymore. They simply moved their stable coins. It's difficult to, to figure out exactly how much, but a very large sum of the Tether holders simply moved their stable coins from Tether over to USDC instead and DAI. And it's actually a good sign. I mean, USDC is pretty flat, but DAI for Ethereum enthusiasts, they're actually starting to go down, which might mean that they're injecting it into owning Ethereum, which we can sort of check on right here. And we can just look at, you know, let me show the Ethereum price instead. We'll go the 1,000 to 10,000 addresses still going down, 10,000 to 100,000. Was going up for a while, but after the big drop, they started dropping pretty big. 100,000 to 1 million. This is probably the most encouraging one. They've jumped up about 0.3% of all of the Ethereum supply, which is hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, and then these are mostly just exchange addresses. So like the three main ones, if we wanted to merge them all together, would be the 1,000 all the way up to 1 million Ethereum addresses. And they're continuing to go down right now. So they were up at a peak of uh, looks like 60.9%. They're down to 59.1. So we want to be waiting on the Ethereum line right here to start rising a little bit. That would be a good sign that not only ETH, but a lot of the ERC-20s are starting to gain some traction and move back in the right direction. Yep. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, so we, so we've seen a lot of, um, whales, uh, switching over, uh, from the UST stable coin, uh, over to USDC and die. Um, and, um, and, and, but then we've seen die sort of coming down a little bit, um, afterwards. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, okay. so USDC is staying pretty stable. Dai is moving down, okay. and Ethereum appears to still be moving down. For those yeah. wondering about Bitcoin, even though this is going to be mainly about stable coins today, Bitcoin we like to look at three major tiers: the 100 to 1,000, 1,000 to 10,000 coin addresses, and 10,000 to 100,000. Now this gold one isn't like the other two. We've seen a pretty big fall in the pink line here. 100 to 1,000, and the red line, 1,000 to 10,000. Uh, both, I mean, if we zoom out to the last year, we can see they were both holding a lot more than where they're at now down here. However, ever since the initial dip that occurred in late January, uh, the gold line's actually been going up. So a lot of the, ver the you know, shark, I, I mean, they're all pretty much whale addresses because they're hundreds of millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars. But the tens of millions of dollars are coin uh, addresses are moving over to the hundreds of millions and even billions of dollar addresses that we see here. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, but we don't quite regard this gold line as quite as exciting due to the fact that a large percentage of these are exchange addresses that don't really reflect active traders accumulating or dumping their assets. So it isn't really a direct reflection of trader confidence. Yeah. 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 So Bitcoin overall still kind of down. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah. So where, where, where do you see the market right now or, or where do you, you know, see it going uh, from here? Yeah. It's obviously been chopping for quite a while. Um, a lot of our metrics have started to look a little more enticing. Uh, I can show you just a couple brief things on Bitcoin circulation is starting to rise. It was taking a dip here in mid-January, but it went from about 166,000 
Bitcoin circulating per day up to where it is now at about 212K per day. So that's very encouraging to see. Daily mm -hmm. active addresses have been more or less flat, the amount of unique addresses interacting on the network. The MVRV, which is the average trading returns, in this case, we're looking at 30 day returns on average per trader. It was very, very low here. And it's actually risen into positive territory despite our line here, our price line staying pretty flat. It means a lot of people likely bought the dip here and did okay just based on this small, small rise. Or they're going back to, you know, older times where prices were lower and they're they're beginning to take profit at this stage. But either way, we'd prefer that MVRV is down here, indicating there's still a lot more pain to be had. So considering it's neutral and even just slightly over 0% now, a little more risk now. Mm -hmm. Weighted sentiment is extremely negative, indicating that the traders are not believers of price being able to bounce. That's a good thing. It means that uh, the amount of FUD right now and shorts that are going on can very likely add to when the price goes up, be basically rocket fuel for the price being able to uh, soar the way we're all hoping and like we saw back in October and November. Supply and exchanges is also going back down after it was actually increasing on this huge plummet in early May. So that's good to see. We already went over whales. Uh, exchange flow is pretty much neutral now. Network realized profit loss. We saw a few negative spikes here, indicating there was an, an immense amount of loss on the network. These are usually times where you can buy the dip. We especially saw big ones right here. That was right around the bottom. Uh, development activity, pretty neutral at the moment. We'd like to just continue to see it staying afloat. You know, mm -hmm. anything above 30 GitHub submissions per day. Happy to see it, but Bitcoin really doesn't matter. We don't even really know the founder. So take development activity with a grain of salt, unless you yeah. know Mr. Uh, Satoshi yourself. <laughs> uh, social dominance and volume is interesting. We like to see dominance look be above 20%. And right now it's at about 18. So yeah. it's getting to where we're starting to you know, see some larger interest in Bitcoin versus just altcoins and S coins all over the place that people are shilling. Uh, dormant coins are not really moving right now. Ratio of on-chain transaction volume and profit to loss is pretty neutral. Whale transaction count is actually moving down. We'd like to see it go in a little more like this and see accumulation spikes like we saw at the beginning of the month. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's telling us Bitcoin isn't it, it does, doesn't quite look like it's primed for a breakout, but it's stable enough with things like circulation and MVRV looking okay, that I, I, it's, it's hard to make an argument that it's going to plummet either. But of course, yes. Yes. as Andy said at the beginning of this call, not investment advice and absolutely anything can happen. Yeah, yeah. So it, it it looks like it's kind of just holding steady, isn't it? Like I, I've seen a pattern of it dropping down the, I don't know, 29, and then it'll go back up to 31, 500, and then it'll right. come back down to, yeah. Lots and lots of chopping for sure. It's very interesting to see. Um, bears and bulls are definitely battling right now, and uh, nobody really knows the answer, but lots of opinions are popping up all over the place. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, the, the, the way I look at it, I mean, you know, what's happening around the world right now you know um we we've, we've got uh you've got the fed that's increasing um you know interest rates right and uh, i i think the goal is to increase it 10 times right 10x uh from where it was um so so and, and plus they're they're got they're doing quantitative tightening where um you know they're they're going to reduce um the supply of um a fiat currency. Uh, so I, I, I guess what's what's from a macro perspective, what's really happening is is that a lot of uh, money is flowing back into the U.S. Um, and in fact, the U.S. dollar is strengthening against uh, many of the other, uh, you know, uh, fiat currencies, uh, which which uh, which we can see. Um, so it's an interesting time where, you know, in the last 
two and a half years where a lot of institutional uh, and new money has come into crypto um, yeah. and how quickly they move, right? Um, how, how quickly they 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 move and and it's um it's it's almost in tandem with the with stock that that we're we're seeing here um but yeah it's it, it's really interesting i mean because if you think about it you know bitcoin was invented to combat uh uncertainty or uncertain times um like what we're having uh, right now and and so the logic would be to actually accumulate bitcoin uh in times of uncertainty uh, that you know, like, like what we're facing right now, but but it's interesting to see um, to see how the the you know the various um, holders or, or investors of Bitcoin are are actually uh, reacting to 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 the macro environment. Yeah, yeah, completely agree. It's it's pretty shocking, and it's actually quite interesting to see that the S and P has started to separate a bit from Bitcoin, which has not bounced the way. Uh, the equities markets have a little bit since late May. So there could be some room for Bitcoin to catch up. That would be nice mm -hmm. to see. Or the S&P may start to collapse a little bit, but Bitcoin may not move because it's got a little, it's a little bit of a bullish divergence against the equities markets right now after basically following them very tightly for the last six months. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and, and it's interesting to see because you know, in the last uh, bull run in 2017, it was non-correlated. Um, and now with institutional money having come in, uh, it's uh, become quite correlated to, mm -hmm. um, to, 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 to the equities uh, market. So that's, right. that's, uh, yeah, that's very interesting to see also. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I know yeah. we're coming up on time, but uh, a couple more things I just want to show really quick. Yeah. This is showing the ratio of how much Tether the top 10 non-exchange whales are holding versus the top 10 exchange whales. So top 10, just as you would, as, as it's explained, any wallets that aren't associated with exchanges, the 10 largest, you know, back here in January, they were holding twice as many, it looks like, Tether as the top 10 exchange wallets. But after this dip, look how that completely flipped on its head. And wow. we saw a huge, huge drop. And now there's, it looks like three times more Tether held on exchanges compared to off by the top 10 uh, of each respective category. Wow. So what does that potentially tell us, Brian? I, I think more than anything, it's just trader confidence in the coin. When there's less confidence in the coin staying stable, as you expect yeah. a stable coin to do, yep. uh, you you keep it on an exchange for a quick sell if it comes back up or a quick buy if it goes down. Maybe some people want to accumulate more in case Tether does this again. Uh, whatever mm -hmm. the case is, uh, it's it's showing a severe lack of confidence right now, which is yep. a concern and and it's very possible that all of crypto is dependent on Tether uh, getting back its reputation as a reliable stable coin because people may not want to go toward alternate routes or they may not have them available on the exchanges that they trade them on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. That's, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, what about, um, yeah, the other stable coins? Yeah. USTC, uh, it doesn't look like there was anything. I mean, the axis is kind of skewed here, uh, yeah. because this has been such a wildly much newer stable coin. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if I zoom in just to this area, starting from May 1st, it, it does look like there was a big flip flop. Uh, mm -hmm. most USTC is appearing to be on exchange, uh, exchanges versus in cold wallets. So that's a big flip as expected. Yeah. Uh, looking at USDC, it should look somewhat the other direction. Oh, interestingly, hmm. it is in the RC20, but we don't seem to have... Oh. Oh, I think you picked the wrong. Yep, um, there's two of them. There so you go. Me... Psh, psh, psh. 
There you yeah, go. so it looks like the big influx happened about two weeks before the tether collapse, which is interesting. I, w I really wouldn't be surprised if there was some insider information of something yeah. being foreshadowed with tethers temporary DPEG because it got all the way up to seven times more on the top 10 non-exchange whales compared to the top 10 exchange whales. Wow. Wow. And it did drop down to back to about two and a quarter. It's still fluctuating pretty wildly, but this is a, a pretty good sign. I mean, five times, three and a half times as much. Uh, clearly, there's plenty of confidence that the non-exchange whales have here in USDC. And then just really quickly to look at DAI. Not quite as expected, to be honest. Uh, it looks like, looks like a lot more coins have dropped than they have risen. Up until recently, they started to rise. But uh, before that, I mean, if, going back to mid-February when it was at a peak of 28 and a half times more on non-exchange wallets, that could be just the nature of DAI because it's more connected to DeFi and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it had a pretty big drop. But even still, this drop shows there were nine times as many. So take that with a grain, grain of salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. Hey, um, so Brian, thanks for sharing, um, you know, these, uh, these insights with us, especially with what's happening, um, in, in the stable coin, um, space and, and, and what, um, where we see, you know, what, what the whales are doing with, with their stable coins. Uh, sure. so obviously, um, you know, the confidence is low right now. And, you know, everyone's probably in a wait and hold, you know, hold and wait situation to see what, you know, what happens next. Or, or, or maybe they're, they're waiting for, you know, Jerome's next announcement and, and you know, what, what he's going to do next. Yeah. So, yeah. So everyone's kind of sitting on the sidelines. I agree. Yeah. It's going to be a very interesting second half of 2022. I can guarantee that. Um, yeah. And the best thing to do is just keep an eye on, Average trading returns, funding rates, um, whether they turn super bearish or super bullish, that's going to dictate a lot. Um, whale behavior, like we just showed today, all are going to factor in a lot to where markets go toward the second half of the year. And of course, it's relation to the S&P 500. So we'll see if equities are starting to look better. Do you have any, uh, with you tracking equities a little more than we do at Santiment, have you yep. seen anything showing one way or another about where stock markets might be going? uh no not not really i mean it, it i i think um the whole world is watching on um because because really right now it's it's the fed you know trying to tackle inflation right. and so um but what's different this time with the inflationary pressures is that it is not demand driven mm -hmm. and so you know the the tools that that you know that that jerome um is using uh to tame inflation uh, it, it usually works best for a demand-driven type of inflation. Uh, because of the pandemic, this was caused by, this is a supply-side uh, uh, driven or supply-driven inflation because, yeah. you know, supply chains were broken, uh, you know, people couldn't get to work, so they couldn't manufacture stuff. So there's a shortage of supply, you know, the world over. So um, being a supply-driven inflation i don't know how well the tools that he's using is going to tame inflation down uh the, the concern is that you know w one will go into stagflation which is even worse than a recession um at least you know, when, when you know you're in a recession you you, you can kind of build yourself out of it um is a destruction of the world economy right a, a destruction mm. and and a and a reset right almost so it's um yeah, again, I, I, I guess, you know, we, we don't know what we don't know. Uh, but but from a yeah, from, from our perspective, you know, this is a supply driven inflation rather than a uh, a, a demand driven inflation, because if it's a demand driven inflation, then that's fine. Right. You, you increase interest rates, uh, people spend less um, and you cool down demand. But right mm -hmm. now it's it's supply driven that there, there just isn't enough supply uh, for the world. Right. Uh, so, right. so yeah. So, so I guess uh, we'll see. We'll see how you know what what happens next. Um, yeah, it's going to yeah, be that, interesting. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, look, uh, for you guys, for you viewers out there, look, you know, hang tight. Uh, don't lose hope. Uh, you know, Bitcoin was invented for for times like these, right? Um, just uh, again, not financial advice, but um, if you had a long term strategy of accumulation of Bitcoin and you were already DCAing into Bitcoin, you know, um, the, there shouldn't be any change, right? You shouldn't be affected by price. Uh, your goal is um, uh, accumulation of Bitcoin, uh, whatever price. So um, don't lose hope. Um, I, I still think that, um, you know, there's 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 room uh, for for, you know, for crypto um, as an asset class. Um, it's, um, but in the short term, you know, we, you know, that there's, it, it there, there's a lot of uncertainty and when there's a lot of uncertainty, uh, people tend to hold on to cash. Yep. Um, so yeah, so, so, so investing activities, um, aren't as bullish, but you know, um, the market cycles, right. They happen. Um, it's just that in crypto, it happens a lot faster than much uh, more often. Yeah. Yeah, much more often. So uh, get used to it and, you know, um, enjoy the ride. Uh, it's scary right now. It's kind of like a roller coaster, but um, it'll be fun again. Totally um, any, any, um, any, any, any advice from, from your end, Brian? I just recommend everyone try to stay safe. The biggest mistakes I see are people investing money that they can't afford to lose uh, due to the, uh, you know, communities they're in telling them that the price is never going to go lower and this is the biggest discount they're ever going to see and then it goes goes low, lower and people get uh screwed over and can't pay their bills and uh we just yeah. want to ensure that none of you are um short-sighted enough to do that yeah yeah so don't don't overextend uh you know make sure you you have enough for your your, your daily expenses right and, and you know keep the lights on food on the table roof over your head right that's yep. all very important for your well-being um yeah uh that that's really good advice brian um yeah and uh yeah you know don't don't um don't overextend stay safe it's that yeah. simple yeah yeah okay uh so guys we're actually trying out a new format we're trying a much shorter format uh you know we usually get straight to the point uh and then um we'll give you back your extra time uh and i i think uh we're close to it aren't we brian I yeah this worked out end. well i think we hit yeah. on hit on the main subject it didn't feel rushed at all and hopefully you guys enjoyed it let andy know what you guys think and we'll try to tweak and adjust to make sure you guys are always feeling like you're getting your your money's worth here yeah yeah and also guys if you are new and you're tuning in uh, so on here, you know, on the second Thursday of every month, I will have Brian on as a as a as a guest who will look at and analyze uh, and share with with you uh, the on chain metrics that's happening on you know the various blockchains. And so do don't forget to tune in. You know, uh, if you want to be alerted, you know, just just uh, follow us. You know, uh, and on Facebook, subscribe. Uh, click on the notify icon so that every time we come on, you get notified. And also, if you know, like the market's pretty flat right now. It's it, it's it's a lull time. Uh, it's probably a good time to get educated. So if you are interested in learning about crypto before putting any money into it, which is always a great idea to know what you're putting your money into, uh, just put class in the comment, right? And and well, if, if you're on Facebook, uh, we can definitely get in touch with you. Uh, if you're on YouTube, uh, well, uh, it'll be a bit difficult. But if you're on Facebook, just just put you know just put class, and then you know someone will reach out to you. Or you can search us up, Equities Tracker, right? And uh, and and give us a buzz, right? Shoot us a, a message on social media, uh, and someone will respond. We're we're you know we're always having classes. We're always trying hard to educate. Uh, new investors uh, or even seasoned investors, right? Because crypto is a pretty new asset class. So we're always here. Uh, you know, give us a buzz and, um, and 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 educate yourself. So before you you part with your money, yeah. Okay. Thanks again, Brian, for tuning in. Um, time for uh, some din din.
<laughs> din din time over here. I hope you have a good morning, Andy, and everyone else. And wherever you are in the world, stay safe. Thank you, Brian. Have a good one. Take care, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.